Hello and welcome back to Deus Machina Demon Bane. Kuru? What? I ease the sternness of my voice and speak a little more calmly. Hey, when someone bullies you, you can cry and scream and shout at them all you want. Tell them you're afraid, ask them why they're being mean. Do it right to their face. Don't go too far. If you do, then you become a bully. Face them fair and square. Cry, yell, hit, pull, bite. Fight all you want, make up, and then... I open Demon Bane's hatch and step outside. The Jabberwock's fierce visage is right in front of my eyes, and Nitocris is, st is still holding Allison with that evil smile on her face. But I don't back down. I hold up my hand to Allison. And all you've got to do is make friends. Allison looks right back at me. There's still doubt in her eyes, but... But... But I'm still afraid. Some grown-ups hit me really hard, even when I cried, even when I said it hurts, over and over again. For those assholes, I make a fist and smile. I'll pound them with Demon Bane. He's contradicting himself. Kuru? Allison squirms in Nito Chris's arms, trying to get away from the false mother that was born from her dreams. Kuru? She's trying to leave the land of fairy tales to come back to reality, and she reaches for my hand. <laughs> Tentacles pour forth from the mirror and attack Allison. The power of the mirror has protected her till now. That's why she was able to escape all this danger unharmed. But now she's trying to escape from its clutches. She's nothing more than the traitor in Nita Chris's eyes. Just then, with deadly accuracy, a beam pierces through Nita Chris's head. Metatron. Metatron, who I was sure had fallen, streaks through the sky towards Allison. Allison finally breaks free of Nita Chris's hold. And this time, this time Metatron seizes Allison firmly in her arms. Without stopping, she flies away to a safe altitude. Now I can beat down on this monster all I want. Al, if we obliterate this guy... My fragment is the mirror in that girl's possession. This is nothing more than an illusion. Destroy it! Oh, hell yeah! I return to the cockpit, and on the monitor I see the berserk Jabwalk's throat filling again with fire. Oh, don't think I'll let you do that again! This is Demon Bane. Princess, that's sublimation spell. We're gonna use the Lumeria Impact. Approve it. Her Opinia system, activate. He didn't even answer any of our calls. Oh, what a selfish, impudent man. Your command? I know, encrypt the words of power. Transmit the nasal code. Nakaru code, sourcing! Ah, the power of anime. <laughs> Still want to know why she seems to control a giant robot from what looks like a you know, motorcycle, but like. <laughs> I got a I'll give the props for actually bothering to uh, do ones for you know the different enemies rather than just having a generic throwing that final move uh, animation. Didn't that thing destroy a city block last time we used it? Stop jumping on top of buildings, you're a giant robot. It's not going to do the foundations any favors. That is the smuggest looking giant robot I have ever seen. After confirming the Jabwalk's annihilation, Metatron lands in a back alley and sets Allison down. And then Metatron collapses like a marionette with its strings cut. Okay, incidentally, I don't know at this point, but is anybody expecting Metatron to take the helmet off and be re revealed to be Lisa? I have no idea if that's actually going to happen, but if it does, I will not be even slightly surprised. You got that? Okay. Metatron. I'm... <laughs> fine. 
My injuries aren't serious. But the blood, you're bleeding. It's all my fault. Uh... Metatron brushes Allison's face with a palm, wiping away the tears. Her hand is cold metal, yet her touch is so very kind and gentle. Don't worry about a thing. But... You're okay now, aren't you? You don't have to be afraid all by yourself anymore, right? Allison stares into Metatron's mechanical eyes. Those eyes are cold, but beneath that mask, there are surely human eyes shining with warmth. Yes. Allison gives a firm nod. Why is it that I find myself thinking of the face be beneath Metatron's mask? Good. Then let's return. Tell me the way, and I'll take you to. I came to what? Hmm. I came to wipe Doctor West's ass for him, but. Huh. I get to see I get to see something interesting. <gasps> it's standing behind Metatron, one with the darkness of the alley. Black mask, black armor, black metal wings, long black hair. A black angel. An angel of the night. A dark angel. A black Metatron? The dark angel responds to the white angel with a slight shrug, and laughter spills from underneath the mask. Sandalphon. <laughs> oh, you're in pretty bad shape, Metatron. Even so, you surely wouldn't don't intend to use your wounds as an excuse to flee now, do you? Take your stance. Sandalphon readies his fists. Metatron readies her beam sabers. And Allison cries out. You can't! Your body is Get out of here! Quickly! No, don't! Ha! The air is charged with the tension on the brink of exploding, and faced with the pressure of their battling warrior spirits, Allison fears that her heart might stop. The fierce battle continues in silence, each trying to read how the other will move. However, it is neither Metatron nor Sandalphon who breaks the stalemate. Major Swing! <laughs> A bladed wing slashes from above, forcing Sandalphon to leap back. A wide fissure is slashed in the ground where he had been standing. And the Dark Angel glares at the unwanted guest with the burning mechanical eyes under his mask. Tiaju Kuru. Damn. I hurry over and what do I find? Another Metatron. A black Metatron. And these two? I don't think they're much for playing nice. Well, not for long at least. Kuru? Metatron is... Yeah, well, this guy's obviously a villain. Holding my bladed mage swing aloft like a sickle, I face off with the Black Angel. What are you gonna do, Black? It's two versus one. The Dark Angel curses, irritated. Looks like we've been interrupted. Metatron, you get to live another day. Yeah! The wind roars, whipping violently through the alley. The Black Angel is already gone. Looking way up into the sky, I see him flying into the distance, propelled by the darkness expelled from his wings. And in mere moments, he's passed out of sight. Damn, he's fast. I keep staring, half in awe. But wait, now's not the time for that. You're all right, Metatron. She looks about to collapse, so I help her, but she stops me with a gesture. I'm fine. This is well within my self-repair abilities. But, Diazukuru. I flinch under her piercing glare. That's right. Metatron doesn't take too kindly to my fighting. She's gonna follow me up with another condemnation? But the next words she speaks are not words of rejection. You helped me this time. <laughs> I thank you. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting words of gratitude, and I'm at a loss for words. Metatron looks up at us, worried, and turns to Allison. I couldn't have saved this girl. That's not... No. It was your power. They underestimated you and these injuries are the result. Hmm. I see that you're beginning to understand your limits. Al. However... After a brief pause, Metatron continues and she looks away, casting her eyes down just a little. And so I still don't think that it is right for you to fight. That again. I've thought of this before, but can't just be because she thinks I'm dangerous. I know that now, after watching her bare wounds to save Allison, and after hearing her desperate words, it matters not what you say, we will Al. Come on, don't lose your cool. 
Al jumps off my shoulder, puffing her cheeks. And in a huff, she returns to her normal form, dispelling Major's style. Without looking away from Metatron, I say, Like I said before, I'm not going to back down. Besides, I can't make you bear everything on your own. I see. Metatron is still looking down. And the wings on her back stretch out and light up, and Metatron's body floats up. This girl should be fine with you. I leave her in your care. Metatron. I call to Metatron as she's about to leave. The angel's eyes look down to meet mine. What? Why are you fighting? What's the deal with that black angel who looks like you? She hesitates for a moment, but chooses to answer my question. I have a grudge against Black Lodge. I'm not the hero of justice everyone says I am. Well, that's a lie. If hatred were the only thing that drives you, you wouldn't have gone to such lengths for Allison. And the other guardian angel the other angel is Sandalfon, the same type of warrior as I. He is a fallen angel who has abandoned his humanity for the sake of power. An agent of Black Lodge. Of Black Lodge? Her wings roar as the light pouring from them grows brighter and more intense. Metatron This time Allison calls to her, and Metatron looks at the girl. Allison looks straight at her and shouts over the roar of her wings. Um Thank you. The angel's expression is hidden behind her mask, and she just nods once. And... Get along with everyone. The white angel takes the air, vanishing into the night sky, and Alison and I look up into the heavens for a while, watching her go. Well, we completed our objective, though not without some difficulty. Holding the compact that she retrieved from Alison, Al sighs. She closes her fist, crushing it in her hand and like a magic trick, the compact bursts into a whirlwind of pages. Decipher Iothris encryption, overwrite program, return to thy true form. The pages are drawn into Al's hand, becoming one with her, and arcane symbols shine faintly on her palm. I'm watching the light, Al mutters. However, what was it that interfered with this fragment? It may well be that we have an enemy other than Black Lodge. Well, no point in worrying about that now, right? Mm -hmm. I ruffle Allison's hair, causing her to glare up at me. I respond with a grin. Lisa and the kids are worried. Let's go home. For a moment, Allison appears shocked. However, that soon gives way to a wide, wide smile. Yes. Does that feel like the end of a chapter to anyone else? No, maybe not. It may seem that everything has been settled nicely, but you're forgetting something. Those t Where do they think they're going without Demon Bane? Please calm yourself, Commander. Ruri relaxes her tightly gripped fists and slumps in her seat, and she sighs deeply and rubs at her forehead. Chucky laughs dryly upon seeing Ruri like this. <laughs> but they're really something. They've completely mastered Demon Bane's systems. I still wish they'd think about the collateral damage a little more, though. It can be assumed that Al Azif's power as a grimoire is having a positive effect on Demon Bane's abilities. <laughs> You're wonderful, Al Cutie. Ruri stares gravely at the image of Demon Bane on her main monitor, conflicting emotions swirling in her heart. Demon Bane. If it had been utterly silent until Diyajukura and Al Azif had broaded it, now using its power just as her grandfather had wished, to destroy Black Lodge, to eliminate all that is other. This should be a fulfilment of Ruri's wishes as well. However, what is this emotion that rises in her chest? Hot, cold and dark. What is it that troubles her so? That stirs her so? Demon Bane. Grandfather. Left it to her. Freezing hot. Burning cold. It lies inside her. So very, very dark. Right, that to me seems like a reasonable-ish point to end this part, so I'll say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next.